But let's kick things off this hour with Rebecca Walzer, Walzer Wealth Management President. And Rebecca, you've highlighted this very tricky line that the Fed has to tow. Uh, in terms of the messaging, it, it was already difficult going into this meeting in light of the recent volatility in the markets. Um, how do you think the Fed navigates the messaging? Yeah, Akiko. It's, it's very difficult, right, because they absolutely can't have 7% year-over-year inflation. That looks like they've done they have not done their job at all. But yet they had to stimulate us through the coronavirus. And so they didn't know the right place or the right amount. And so we maybe overstimulated and that gave us inflation. And now they've got to pull that back. And, you know, when you think about it, we were at $120 billion a month at the peak of stimulus between mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. And now we're slimming that down to next to zero in March. And now we're going to start running off. So we have a double whammy of going from stimulus to runoff, which we know that has a huge impact on the economy. But then we also are going to you know, start rate hiking uh, potentially in March. So I think the Fed has a really difficult, they're, they're really in a rock and a hard place. And it's really difficult. And I, I'll tell you, Akiko, when they are seeing these high rate, you know, swings of volatility, it makes them probably very leery of really coming out and, and stating a policy that will make the mark go one way or the other. But that's what they have to do. They're in this position. Position. They're the ones that have to make the decision. And I think that, you know, we're the market is, I think the market is expecting good news today because obviously we're all to the positive, but it could go really bad, really fast if we get a comments we don't want to hear. And Rebecca, it really comes down to what we've also heard from both the Fed signaling as well as some of the early banks that have gotten out there during earnings season and what they're anticipating. Uh, some of them, as we were hearing from JP Morgan, Chairman CEO Jamie Dimon, expecting perhaps upwards of six, maybe even seven. So from your perspective, what is kind of that true expectation number of rate hikes that we should expect? You know, Brad, I'm really thinking four is going to be where we level off. I know some analysts are saying as many as eight. Jamie Dimon obviously going up to six. You know, it's it's it seems really difficult. Now, let's if we took we look at a macroeconomic perspective, we've had low rates really since too big to fail and quantitative easing one, two, three, and 2008, nine in those time frames. So we have never really truly normalized rates since the Great Recession back in 2008, 2009. And so I guess if you're looking to normalize rates that you could see uh, these major eight rate hikes. But I think that in the short term, in the next 18 to two years, it's there's just I don't see how this economy, uh, you know, absorbs eight rate hikes. So I'm I'm going to go with four for this year as the, as the upper bound. And uh, any more than that, I just can't see that this market will be able to sustain. And I think the Fed does care. If the Fed didn't care, we wouldn't have stimulated so much in the last 20 months with Corona. Rebecca, in the meantime, you've got a lot of viewers uh, who are looking at their portfolios this morning saying, you know, well, what do I do if the volatility is going to continue? Do I hang tight? Do I cut my losses, rotate into some of the value names? What are you telling your clients? Yeah, that is a huge, uh, that is the the name of the game, right? Where do we go in a period of volatility? It depends on the kind of investor we're talking. If it's a short-term investor, you know, there probably are some trades that can always be made to, you know, with options and all of these things to make some shorts and all these things that can make some some gains. Obviously, the financials, we expect to do better when the rates go up. Um, but for the long term investor, who maybe someone who's closer to retirement or already in retirement, and this is what their, their portfolio that they're living off of, they really have to uh, go more conservative because I do believe this is going to be a very rocky year for the market. There's going to be a lot of things that, that happen this year that are going to have an impact on the market outside of the Fed, you know, the supply chain issues, what's going on with, you know, Taiwan and China and Ukraine and Russia. We've got wars, we've got geopolitical issues, we've got, you know, political issues at home. So we have a lot of economic factors that beyond just the Fed, beyond just the markets that are going to impact these markets, especially the supply chain and inflation. And so I would really encourage long-term investors to uh, seek as much conservative safety uh, while maintaining some positions in the market as possible. But what's truly been interesting is how many CEOs are continuing to discuss the amount of impact that the supply chain and, and combined with the global chip shortage and the chip crisis 
that both happening at the same time as we're going to continue to discuss throughout this hour, you know, how much that actually is a major boon to inflation, unfortunately. And so with that in mind, we're looking to see when some of those issues would be resolved. What do you think some of the necessary efforts are to, to push that forward and how quickly we can even see a movement on some of those resolutions, especially with regard to chips uh, impacting the inflation as well? Absolutely, Brad. Well, I know that we're talking, we're, have, we're hearing talk of a, a new uh, chip manufacturing plant being made out of Ohio, which we really could use. Um, I think it's really sad that, 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 that we didn't have a, a little bit better foresight to see that the Internet of Things, IoT, as we call it in the industry, you know, is going to need a chip for everything. And that means that the demand just you know, is a quantum leap in demand. And, and and unfortunately, I think the whole world was sort of short-sighted and not seeing that actually come to fruition. And so now we actually have to make these plans. The problem, of course, Brad, is these are long-term investments. These are long-term commitments, new plants, new things. So even if we get a new plan, even if we have these things, even if we bring stuff back closer to the United States and, and control our manufacturing, which is obviously, you know, difficult to do in the, in the cost space, um, it's it's still a longer term solution. So the short term solution is unfortunately we're going to have shortages. We're going to have the supply chain interruptions that we're seeing. We're going to have cell phones. We're going to, the new cars. The the new car problem. I mean, I think dealerships could be going out of business because they can't get inventory. So this is a short term problem that we're going to have to deal with, and we need long term solutions that just can't come fast enough. And so it will have an impact, Brad. Absolutely. Rebecca, really quickly here, you touched on what's playing out with uh, Ukraine and Russia. I mean, how significant a risk is that really from a market perspective? Is this just about uncertainty or, or could it be a, a bigger overhang? Great question, Akiko. I actually expect that we will see an incursion by Russia into Ukraine. I'm, uh, Russia seems to have the opinion that Ukraine is really still theirs, and it was really not shouldn't have been, you know, partitioned in the first place. So I'm fully expecting that. I think the market should prepare for that. And um, unfortunately, um, you know, it looks like America might be getting into that fray again and, and starting another deployment. And that is a really big concern. And I think that when you couple, you know, an addition, a new war or a new kind of military exercise uh, that involves military with uh, the short, you know, supply chain problems, inflation problems, the fact that we've overstimulated and now we have to pull back and go from stimulus to runoff and raise interest rates. It is just so much for this economy worldwide to handle. So I think, again, investors need to be really smart and prepare for volatility and prepare to, you know, be a little bit more conservative on the risk profile if they can't afford to sustain um, short-term losses 18 months or, or potentially longer. But I, I think people need to be prepared for, um, you know, a market that isn't as friendly as what we've been used to since 2009. Rebecca Walser, president of Walser Wealth Management, joining us here today. Thanks so much for the time and insights, Rebecca. Appreciate it.